if you're interested to know what's going on with my dad, I'll show you right here. So this is his report after he did the angiogram. This is the aorta that's going up right there. You can see here in the model that I got him, this is the aorta right there. So you see there's two branches. There's the right coronary artery. I don't know to you, it's your left, but you know, you gotta think of the patient. That's their right coronary artery. And then this is the left coronary artery. And then you see there are several branches that come off of it. So if you take a look at the model, you can see it's a little bit tough here, but the right coronary artery comes from out right there. Okay, that right one is this one right over here. And then right under here, sneaking under the left atrium, you can see the left coronary artery as it starts to come out uh, before it branches, which is this one over here. Okay, so the next part of the video, I'm going to show you uh, what's going on out of these because you can see we have the left main, left interior descending, left circumflex, right, right coronary artery. So let me explain those. So here it says the left main, the vessel originates from the left coronary sinus. All right, left interior descending. There's mild diffuse disease, disease throughout the vessel calcified. Calcified means that it's hardened. What is the left interior descending? Well, if you take a look here, as the left comes out, it starts to come down, right? And it's on the front of the heart, so it's anterior. It's going down, so it's descending. So it's this part right here. So it says right here in the mid region, the mid left interior descending, it's 70% stenosis, meaning 70% blocked calcification. So again, if we take a look at their diagram over here, you can see going right down here, this is it, is it branches right here in this area, you can see it's 70%. So coming down here, right, that's in this region right here, that's about 70%. And why is that bad? Because the area afterwards, if this gets completely blocked, will have a problem uh, getting uh, blood flow. And then the cells, uh, you know, will start depriving oxygen. You can end up with a heart attack when the cells die. That's why that's bad. Take a look at the next part of the report. We're seeing diagonal branches still in the left interior descending. But we're seeing here the first one is 80% and the second diag diagonal is also 80% stenosis. So what is that talking about? Well, if we take a look at the diagram that they have over here, they're saying, okay, well, here's your left interior descending as it goes down. And then you have a diagonal right here. That's the first one. It's 80% blocked. And then you have the second diagonal, which is coming right off, you know, as a diagonal, as an angle. And that's also 80% blocked. So if you take a look at our heart model over here, you know, here's our left interior descending. Again, these are not exact images, but giving you an idea is you have diagonals or branches that would be coming off. So that's blocked because if these areas afterwards do not receive the blood flow or the oxygen, the cells start to die. Um, if it's reversible, it's angina, but if they die, then, you know, that's uh, necrosis and that's a heart attack. So those areas are definitely important because you need it in order for the heart to function as a pump or else you start to lose uh, pumping ability of the heart. To our left circumflex, left circumflex, it says here, well, the first marginal lesions about 90% stenosis. Again, in this diagram, it looks like it's going uh, down, but what's basically going on is the circumflex is circular. It goes around the circumference. So what's happening over here in our model is it's actually going here underneath the left atrium. If I rotate the heart, you can see it's coming around over here. And then, you know, you have branches that come off. So it's trying to say that, you know, one of those branches, as they mentioned here, uh, they said as well, it's 90% block, so 90% stenosis, right? So that's not good because you're not feeding, you know, the other side. Uh, of the wall of the heart. So, you know, uh, they need to take care of that and put a bypass around it so that blood flow can go around that blockage. And finally, last but not least, we have the right coronary artery and it says the right posterior descending coronary artery. So if we break that up, RPDA, it means it's coming off the right. It's 80% stenosed. If we look at this diagram, we see it's all the way down, you know, at the end. And I actually got a question for you coming up after this video. So if we take a look, here's the aorta. You can see the right coronary artery. It's coming around. And I actually have to take it off of this here. I don't know if I can do this here with one hand. But um, if we take a look as, you know, again, this is the front of the heart as it wraps around, you know, you see it comes down here. So uh, that's the one. It's the right posterior uh, descending artery. And that is 80%. Uh, blocked right down in that region. So, you know, going to feed the apex or you would say actually the tip of the heart right down there. We finished um, talking about the coronary arteries, uh, the vessels that are feeding the wall of the heart. Let's take a look at some other stuff. The left ventricle size is normal. Normal is good, right? The function of the heart is normal. It pumps really well. The pressure is normal. The left ventricle end diastolic pressure is normal. The ejection fraction, that means um, pretty much the percentage of blood that gets pumped out of the heart uh, when the heart beats. Uh, 
is greater than 55%, that's really good. All right, so you know, we pretty much want to stay over 50%. That's really good. There are no wall motion abnormalities. That's amazing. So basically, we're saying the heart muscle is really good. It's working and it's pumping. Nothing wrong with the mitral valve. However, here is getting the aortic valve replaced um, because he has my moderate aortic valve uh, stenosis, and aortic regurgitation. So here is the aorta. Um, if we open it up in here and you take a look inside, I don't know if we can tilt that right in there. You can. I almost forgot I had a question for you. So if we take a look at the left coronary artery as it's going down, anything close to the aorta where the blood flow is coming out of and it's going down here, we call this area proximal. Anything further down, we call it distal, further away. So what do you think is worse to have, a blockage that is more proximal or a blockage that is more distal? Which one is worse, a blockage that's more proximal or a blockage that's more distal?